Why is Alan such a dick sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there's, the, there's like the easy answer. And yeah. Which is? He's on the spectrum. Welcome back to the Sheets and Roll podcast. I'm Chris and these are my good friends. Hi, I'm Harad. I'm Aaron. Wait, what did I just say? Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm Aaron. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm Aaron. <laughs> I kind of did like a... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, today we're going to do on the 25th episode of the Sheets and Roll podcast, we're doing the imitation game. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it. <clears throat> uh, the, um, the first thing I want to talk about, this show is mainly going to be about... Um, Alan Turing himself and how Alan Turing's whole journey throughout the film. And um, the first thing I want to talk about is the quote that's used throughout the movie, which was, sometimes it is the people who no one imagines anything of who do the things that no one can imagine. So what does this quote mean and who does it apply to? Obviously, it applies to Turing, but like, it, but in general... It definitely doesn't apply to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. Uh, do you want to start that on? Uh, sure. Um, so, yeah, I think this quote refers to, like, let's say, in people that are maybe overlooked sometimes uh, in certain situations, someone's that, some people that are not generally, um, I don't know, the main, like, character in, in a specific place. Like, they're not very loud. They're maybe not... Uh, conforming to the norm of what something normal, a, a normal person would be, they might be overlooked, and they might have the idea or the solution that the uh, these other people wouldn't have thought of in the first place because maybe they're not like programmed to because they're so normalized, right? Maybe this person that's I don't want to say a reject, but like someone that's a bit different than from what the normal in not someone normal in society is might have thought of it, but the other other people haven't hadn't thought. So that's mm -hmm. what the quote means to me, kind of. So it's the, the the abnormal people thinking of. It's not abnormal. It's just someone that's not normal. Let's say but someone. But abnormal. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's not necessarily abnormal in, in in the in the sense that you that people might think, but also like just people that are segregated altogether, right? Like especially the movie, um, they they made a pretty big point about like segregation as well as like sort of like people uh, the places of like a woman in, during that time as well as yeah. like gay people and like people on the spectrum as well like how hard it was for them to fit in mm -hmm. so people that just stand out in those ways that are mostly rejected especially during that time but mm -hmm. now too like there's always people that um have a hard time standing out that way so the reason these i feel like that quote is like very powerful is because it's those like people that that are outside of like that the the norm in that sense normally tend to have more potential because it's it's in their strengths that p nobody sees that they can strive in so i, I found that very uh i feel like it can apply to everyone and like in, in many different fields and I, I found it was a very cool quote would you say that it's a this it's an advantage or a disadvantage that nobody thinks of someone like that disadvantage like like, like is, is it a disadvantage for someone or is it an advantage for someone to be like someone who is relegated to this kind of quote. If you uh, don't understand what I mean, I I think I think it's an advantage for the person because they'll come up with the idea and they'll be known for it. If that's what they're looking for, of course, it might be also a disadvantage because they might be not looked like they might be not asked or you know like Alan Turing, like he kind of let's say in the movie he didn't really say that oh. Uh, I'm so smart I'm so this I'm so that like he kind of got sought after like the general kind of went after him and his idea was brought forward so in that case it was an advantage for him but it might be a disadvantage because maybe he would just never have showed up to the interview right like he would have never done his like biggest but, life's goal but he just but he but in the movie he shows up for the interview and he's like why are you here and he's like oh well, I'm the best mathematician in the country whatever in the yeah, world but he was like at first oh, like, I love that interview what was it where he's like uh, so why why do you want to like work for your majesty and he's like oh I don't really <laughs> that's what I'm <laughs> saying like, <laughs> like he didn't really want to be part of the army or he didn't really want to he just wanted to solve a damn crossword puzzle that's I think what yeah. he wanted to do so in that case I think it might be a disadvantage kind of mm -hmm. I think the disadvantage comes um, normally when you are sort of separated by by your community by your society in that way the disadvantage comes where when like nobody really cares for you so people normally t tend to take advantage of your work of what you've accomplished so especially in alan turing's case 
He did everything for the sake of like the country as well, like for the world, but with nothing in return. And if mm. anything, got shit for it. True. Well, so well a lot of people that yeah they strive for greatness, but they don't really get much in return. So I say that that, that that's a disadvantage. Is that if you're if you're going down that path, don't expect any anybody to do anything good for because you because you're unimaginable. Like in your, it is unimaginable for you to do something, something like that. Yeah. Like you're invisible, right? Yeah. yeah. Like I remember, I I read this book, and it was an interesting book. I, I I talk about it often, not on the show, but like I in general, I talk about it often because it's a play on society. It's called the city in the city, mm. and it's basically two cities that exist in the same place, but okay. they're they're the colors of the cities are different. The way people walk are is different. The way people act and dress is different. Mm. And the way it works is that everyone is conditioned to unsee the other city. Wow. So if you see someone who's from the other city, like if you're from city one and you see someone from city two, yeah. you're conditioned mentally to unsee that person. It's like they don't exist. Like oh, as, if, as, as if that's they don't crazy. exist. Why so does that remind me of, um, uh, the, what was it? The thinker? No. Oh man, what was that book we read in high school? Uh, yeah, wait, wait, the wait. Giver. I know. The Giver. The Giver. <laughs> the Thinker. <laughs> the Thinker, my man. <laughs> I remember nothing from that book. Yes. All, I remember yeah, honestly, a, all I remember is a river. <laughs> all I remember is like a, there's a chase scene at the end or something. Someone's or, running away. That's like, all I just I remember like people just saw the world in black and white. Okay. But okay. like it, it, it was in, on the same page of like people being programmed to yeah. like think and see. Mm. Yeah, universe. but basically what happens is in the book is there's a murder. And because the person is wa- it, like in the police from both of the cities are working together, but because the the murderer walked in a way that both cities are not conditioned to see, they're both forced to unsee that person. Whoa. 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 Mind blowing okay. stuff right there. So it's, it's a very good book. It's called the city in the city. The city Go check it city. out. But it's, uh, it's interesting because that's like kind of what you're saying, like where people were trying to like unsee Alan, but Alan was so outspoken yeah. about his, about his creation that it led to him like gaining the attention of a bunch of people and he, and his intelligence was undeniable did he though what did mean? he gain the attention of, of all those people well yeah because that's how he got like uh, like uh, Menzies the, the special agent he's the only one who saw Alan Turing for the genius that he was sure so okay, then so he then he used him to go over the thing's head. To he go, he went over Deniston's head yeah. to become the 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 head of the head the, of the yeah the crypt like the cryptology Bletchley thing. Park, uh, thingy, Bletchley, yeah. uh, a Bletchley Park, a Bletchley Park, and um, he that's how he got the attention of like Winston Churchill, and then that's how he got the money to then fund building Christopher, which then ended up cracking. <laughs> 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 Oh, uh, dude, you know how we should have started the podcast? <laughs> now we should have started the podcast. You should have been like, are you paying attention? <laughs> <laughs> that would have been sick. Uh, I, I, love exactly. minutes, I, love, I love I love watching minutes. I love watching yeah, Doctor real. Strange break the, <laughs> <and that's laughs> break the multiverse. Bro, I can't believe they didn't have a Captain America reference. Man. <laughs> Can't believe Captain America did not make a <laughs> cameo. <laughs> or Stanley just like Stanley makes an appearance, you know, just like out of nowhere, shooting down nuts because <laughs> he was old enough at that time. <laughs> uh, but wait, I'm sorry, I'm still not uh, like on your same page regarding like the whole attention thing because not only did he not do it for the attention, but he didn't really get that much recognition. Mm. At all, like everything was like, so who secret. Who did he get it from? It was from who did Churchill he get it from? Well, and, like, if anything, it was it was. Well, he didn't get anything from it because it was completely top secret. Mm. Of the course, whole, the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So he got obviously he got no, he didn't get killed for it per se, but like he got killed because of other. Well, he committed, you know, he uh, self deleted, you know. But um, did he wait? Did he or did he? Um, he did. He did he pass on, from the from the meds? No, no. He he had, he was chemically castrated. Castrated, right? And then he. Because, oh yeah, right. Because it it right. really screws took with your hormones. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like mentally. Took yeah, it yeah, yeah. That's true. Uh, okay. it, he became like you can see like at the end, he, like it really took a deep toll on him. Yeah. Uh, and then he had to, you know, he he eventually, you know, unfortunately, took his own life. Mm-hmm. But he did that not because of the project necessarily, but because. But even then, you can even argue because at the end of the movie, he was still building his project. Yeah, yeah, you could see it in his house. Like he had some pieces there. Some he was rebuilding there. his computer or his Turing machine. Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
It's kind of like that movie Ex Machina. I've actually never watched uh, that movie. Have I seen that? I've actually never watched that movie. I think I've I seen it, it, but it was like so forgettable. <laughs> so forgettable. It's the one it's, it's the one where the 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 guy falls in love with a robot yeah. and the robot fools fools him. Yeah, I think I remember. Spoiler. I don't know why really Ryan Gosling is coming into my brain now, but it, <laughs> it was I know it's it's a, it's a it's a very good movie. Um but is there, is there anything else you would like to Object! chew? I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, baby. <laughs> I, had to do it. I, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> so, uh, so before we continue, uh, I'd like the guys. I'd like you guys to leave a like and subscribe. Ballsy. Thank you guys so much for watching so far. If you guys are really enjoying it, uh, please do so. Uh, any, if you have any co- thoughts or whatever opinions you want to place in the comment section, leave it down. It would be great. I, w- I would love to see your thoughts and opinions about the movie. Also, follow us on Instagram. Yes. Because. We post uh, shorts there that are reels, Chris. What that's, are that's shorts? The hip, that's the hip thing, bro. It's reels. It's reels we pour, We post short shorts on our. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo. <on> our page. <laughs> <laughs> so, so come on over. Uh, the Instagram link will be in the description. Um, there's about 410 followers on Instagram. It's about 190. So I want to see. Those like, are rookie numbers. I want to see 600 subscribers. Followers, sorry, on my Instagram, and I'll bring by tonight. By, by tonight. tonight, twelve o'clock, or Gotham blows up. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck. fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um. So we're gonna continue on. Uh, my next question is about Alan himself, which is again, which is why is Alan such a dick sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there's the, there's like the easy answer. And yeah, which is he's on the spectrum like it's hard for him to like understand ah, social, social cues, cues yeah. and yeah. have like basic conversation like he talked he, he compared i found this so interesting how he could compares communication with uh, cryptography and he's like how is that different from talking yeah i yeah, love that yeah, yeah, i was like yeah it's true though because all there's well, all like the, these- um, christopher gave in the book yeah 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 yeah, yeah. And I, and I actually wrote that it was um, I wrote that as a note it's like the film is not just about cracking a Nazi code but Alan's journey and understanding human code mm, facts because mm. I think his upbringing also has to do something with that yes along with his let's say he's on the spectrum or whatnot but his upbringing his, his, his the school life that he had was so traumatizing like he lost his closest friend he was that bullied he, that he was bullied mm. he lost his closest friend that I mean, he loved because he wrote an I love you letter you know in the in the coded language that they made up and the traumatic upbringing, I'm sure, didn't help his already bad case of not understanding social cues, not having a lot of friends. You know, I really think that that attributed to some of his being a dick in his like. Adulthood. I think. I think also it has to do with like you know those people who call their mom's mother. Yeah. <laughs> Is it's, it like it's, Sheldon? It's like, <laughs> it's like those. I Sheldon, find that those people are often big not. Big mother. <laughs> I find that those people are often very disconnected from their parents because they're using a very like a non-personal, formal. a very formal, formal and non-personal mm. but way of saying... How do you, how do you saying, think that would affect like people's uh, behavior on. and social... Hold on. So I'm getting there. So it, because he's using a, a, a formal and non-personal way of communicating with his mother, that means he probably doesn't have a very good connection with his mother. Mm. So because of that, he's not necessarily taught the social cues by his mother necessarily, right? His mother called him an odd duck and whatever. Right. So yeah. in his mind, it's already instilled that he's not necessarily a normal person, which mm-hmm. he isn't. Mm-hmm. He isn't because, you know, obviously he's like a genius. But at the same time, it's you're also cementing in his mind that because I'm not normal and these people are, I kind of shouldn't associate myself with these kind of people. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's why he's a dick. Yeah, but it's he's also very forward with everything as well right he 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 does he says what it's in what's on his mind what is, what's on his mind and he's like straight to the point like if he thinks if he thinks that you're like wrong or that like you're not smart enough for the group for example when you fired the two literally in two seconds like, i'm sorry <laughs> like he, he, there's no connection right so for him it's like just straight it's like okay like you're not good enough bye like that's it you know so that's why for him it's like he's he, not, he, he doesn't have that sense of sympathy um but at the same time it's it's ironic because he's also very fragile in his personality yeah 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 um, but it's I think it's really just because he's on the spectrum that's how he but he has a hard time fitting in because of that you know he has a hard time understanding social cues like uh, Harad said well um, he kind of learns he, he learns, learns eventually, but he has a hard time is, he is gives what I'm the saying. people apples guys apples, apples. Yeah. 
<laughs> little bit, but even then, oh, what's what's the guy? What's the other guy's name there? Uh, Hugh. 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 Where he's like, my 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 uh, thanks to Miss Clark because it wasn't his idea to give yeah, the apples. Yeah, yeah, right? it was. Uh, J- John. Like even then, he had to, he had to say that. Oh, Miss Clark thought it was a good idea for me to bring you. Apples. And then he proceeds to try to tell a joke. A joke. joke. Yeah. <laughs> but the whole point is that like he because he spent so much time like being very uh, like a straight shooter and he only really talked in code when it was to Christopher or whoever. Mm, and yeah. because of that he he didn't learn the proper code of human communication because he didn't learn the proper code of human communication and that caused him to um how can i say this like to develop that aspect of his life in a poor manner mm. which led to him be like because maybe that's why he was getting bullied and shit he was getting bullied because he was different. Yeah, True. You yeah, saw but him like with the peas and the carrots. Yeah, yeah, but it's like OCD, you no, know? like you know. But but it's probably but also it's like it it also comes down to a personality reason, right? It's not just because people f- do horrible things to other people because it feels good, but because of a dislike towards that person, either because they're different or either because they slighted you in some way. Yeah, so they also bring up, like he he mentions it multiple times, like Alan, that um, v- like people. Uh, people do violence they enjoy violence because it feels good mm. I just wish he developed on that a bit more because okay it feels good but why you know it's like why Why do people crave that I think like the point he's trying to make obviously is that like just like there's nothing there's no point to it other than the fact that it feels good because mm. like the, the act is hollow is how he explains it yeah um, but I wish like he explains like why people still look for that like why do people enjoy it to like really explain like um the, the the behavior of like the bullies at school, right? As well as like the well, well yeah. yeah, but but also think about it. it. It makes sense what he's saying. Of course it does. Because if you look at it this way, right? People who do violent things, they do it because they enjoy the pain of mm-hmm. others, right? Who enjoy the people who enjoy doing violent things, yeah. right? Let's say someone gets into a fight. You get into a fight with someone, and you enjoy violence, mm-hmm. and you're punching this person. The other person just doesn't even flinch. Doesn't hurt them doesn't you don't, you don't inflict pain on them mm. and what that does is it puts in their minds like i don't i can't hurt this person this is not even fun yeah the the fun of violence is the pain you if inflict. anything it makes it makes well, the you reaction angry. the rea- they're not getting the reaction they want from the person that is too. that not it like because they want to f- also feel strong exactly they want to feel overpowering and they're not getting a reaction the guy's just like if they're not doing anything yeah they I'm like the reaction the- i'm gonna back off just like when he stopped Punching that makes the board, sense. Boards that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he yeah, stopped yeah. punching the board. Stop giving them the satisfaction of him suffering, and they let him go. And then Christopher came to save him, or whatever, right? That's he, true. Yeah. Christopher came to save. <laughs> <him>. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, that, that's, that's actually smart. Yeah, like how uh, when he stops, that's when like they were they were unsatisfied with with the act at that point, right? Because they weren't getting the uh, the pain and suffering that they were looking for. Because as as fucked as it sounds. Mm. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Well, bullies were rough back then. Apparently, <laughs> apparently <laughs> nailing Dude, people they, on their floorboards, yo, bro. Man, that's crazy. Just leave him to rot. Like bro, yes, I, like attempted murder. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, I think yeah. I think he's a. I think he's a dick because like, it's not just that he doesn't understand social cues, but he believes in his heart that he's like better than everyone else. He believes or he knows. <sighs> he knows I think so, in some aspects but he, he believes he know- he better, he's better than I don't think he's I don't think in every aspect of his life he thinks he's better than everyone else That's I think true. in like the general mathematics science world I think he there's in no way he thinks he's better at like talking to women or social cues mm-hmm. better than Hugh probably there's no way he thinks that but he doesn't right? really care about talking about talking to women That's true, thing. true true so but I think I think he does no, I think in Bletchley he thinks I'm the best one here oh for sure mm-hmm. so for that, sure. that, that Eric, gave him his like Go but, pass on everything, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, he, like he thinks that like he's the most important person there, right? Mm. So he like disregards like the, the whole system. He thinks that like what he's doing is the most important. It doesn't matter what every everybody else thinks or does, and that's definitely a flaw in him for sure. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's you need to understand that there's like a s- certain structure that you need to follow, and like um, Dennis didn't explain to him, uh, like especially like he's like, how do you think you win a war? Uh, yeah. uh, discipline or, uh, discipline order and uh, chain, chain of command, command. Yeah. and it literally goes over his head yeah. <laughs> 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 I'd say less let me just go so, over your head so, wait, so who's who's your who's your boss who's your commanding officer Winston Churchill gives the address and everything dumbass 
<laughs> it's like, oh, really? <laughs> well, I happen to know this special agent. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> MI6 special agent. Oh, that was oh, good. Man. He's, he's just choking all his water. <laughs> Goes over his head. <laughs> <laughs> there was a part where obviously he meets Joan and Joan is like, Joan manages to kind of humanize Alan, turns him from a man, from a man to a robot. Um, Wait, she dehumanizes him? No, she humanizes, no, humanizes him. him. You just said she turned humanizes. him from a man to a robot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, <laughs> My bad. I beg your pardon. Uh, the uh, Joan Joan turns Alan from like he humanizes she humanizes him and like turns him to like someone who can interact with other people in a friendly manner compared to like the sort of a condescending jackass that he was at the beginning of the film. Um, but at the, near the end when he tries to push Joan away, he, oh, yeah. Joan calls him a monster. Mm. Yeah. So like, what did Joan mean when she called Alan a monster? Cause she, he, she said like, every, you know, the others are right. You, you really are a monster. Hmm. Because, at that point, she didn't understand why he was doing that, though, right? He was trying to protect her because, like, he found out that, like, the Soviets had um, infiltrated in their base mm-hmm. and that, like, they're, like, not safe. Um, so, in his mind, he was doing it for, for the right reason. And, like, even though he couldn't he couldn't really explain himself to her because he wanted to keep it a secret. So, like, for her, it just came out as, like, flat. No, but, because, like, in like, general. He, but we're talking about in general. yeah. Like why? Why? So the, your question is like why she thinks that he's a monster as well? No, it's it's in general why it's not just her, but like why does everyone like why do other people think that he's a monster? Maybe it's because again coming back to like not the social cues, but maybe the human relationship aspect. He doesn't really understand it. I think like he doesn't really bode well with friends. Like he doesn't have any friends. Like maybe he feels like a machine to everyone else, right? Mm-hmm. He's so infatuated with building these machines and like. Uh, machine learning and understanding and he's so like removed from this human world I think right Mm -hmm. that's why maybe people call him a monster maybe monster is not the right word but like they're just trying to treat him as something that's different right maybe they're classifying him as a machine himself like he's so for me he's so removed from the human aspect of the world like from everything that I was seeing even in in physical form when uh, and, and when they were first together when they got first engaged with Joan I know he wasn't straight he was homosexual but still like he wouldn't barely, t- he would barely touch her. Like human contact, things like that, displayed on the movie scene, like showed him so far removed from the human aspect. Like that's why I think they were calling him a monster. Do you like, think he would never hug anyone, touch anyone, handshakes? Like th- when they solved the Enigma code finally, Peter comes over and like hugs him, and he's so distraught by the fact that someone's hugging him. Yeah, you know, like maybe he's, like, he's so removed from that? like. He's like the Tin Man, right, or whatever, from Alice in Wonderland, like finally getting <laughs> oh, a heart Alice or something. Is oh, you mean, is it Alice or, or is Shaman? It, uh, whatever. Wiz- uh, Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, Wizard of Oz, when the Tin Man gets a heart Stupid. or whatever. Uh, maybe he's like that, and he's finally becoming a human or something, right? But and that, at that point, they called him a monster, I guess. That's why. Do you, do you think that's why he's like so in love with his machine? Because he doesn't need to deal with that, the emotions, but really just the brilliance of his creation. And it's probably an extension of him. So that's right. why he loves it so much. Like mm. he created this thing or yeah. this, this, this uh, he might be He might be a sapiosexual. <laughs> what is that? I have no it's, a, it, uh, it's someone who's, in, who's attracted to intelligence. Oh, maybe. Okay, no good. Pan, pansexual was um, like... You're, you're attracted everything. to pans. <laughs> you like fucking pans or something? <laughs> no, where's that from? You know that? Sh- you know, have you seen that? It's a Netflix show. Like, <laughs> it's a Netflix show. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a girl in the counter, and she's like at a convenience store, and the guy goes up to him and like, "You want to go out?" She's like, "No, I'm pansexual." She's like, "He's like, you like fucking pans or something?" <laughs> <laughs> what oh, show wow. is this? <laughs> Sh- Google it after. I'm gonna show you. <laughs> to see. They look at pans and they go, "Baby girl." <laughs> Um, but sorry, <laughs> what was the point we were making now? Uh, that he's sapiosexual. Sapiosexual. It's uh, yeah, like I think he's go- attracted going to, back like, to that brilliance. Go- mm. Brilliance, but going back to like what? Yeah, that's why he's like he wanted to be with Joan, not because like he was not because he was attracted to to her body, but her mind. Because the crossword puzzle, she solved it in less time she's than like, he I, did. I love, like I love talking to you, right? 
And the like, he saw that bro, bro, bro that scene the crossword puzzle me. was like that six scene minutes. That kills right? me, bro. Which, Which one? one? The part where he's like, uh, uh, how do you think it's possible to do this in six minutes? Yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah, I can no, do it I only can do like eight, eight minutes. And then she's just like, <laughs> is that, you know, it's not this very possible. This motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, like, it, then nobody's going to be able to solve it. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Daddy. <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> uh, yeah. But as far as, um, what was it? I think... I think he's he's a monster. Like they called him a monster because especially when they cracked the code, he didn't want to use it super soon. Like in this, in the case of he's too rational. Peter, is what you're saying? Yeah, in the case of Peter's the brother, uh, Peter's brother, who was on the ships, who was going to get attacked. He's like, no, we can't do that because if we attack them now, then they'll like they'll know that we cracked Enigma and many more people will die. So it's like kind of they have to make those really difficult decisions, mm. and then Peter. Um, obviously he gets mad because he loses a brother from this mm. um, that's fucked and he he's forced to make those like decisions and everything comes down to statistics who is he gonna save statistically speaking the how many people can he save while also not, not alerting, alerting the Germans mm -hmm. so that that's also like another aspect of the film as well it's like so far they chose like a utilitarian approach rather than a mm -hmm. deontology yeah um, deontological so, deontological I, I always mess up with that word Deontol yes. deontological so the difference the difference being that Big like words. the ends justify the means while it's for uh, the other ones the means like justify the, the ends the ends um, or at least like the, the, the means shouldn't shouldn't be like any harsh like me you shouldn't be taking harsh measures for yep. the means in that no case you have to take end. a utilitarian approach you, if you, you just start no if you just start changing everything up then yeah you sure. know, they're gonna change. The they're gonna like, update Enigma, uh, and then Enigma, you're gonna yeah. get fucked. You're gonna get sued, yeah. um, Which is something we um, for um, I think I'm gonna talk about later. Like so I think I think you know what, what, what I mean when they cracked Enigma. Uh. <laughs> 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 <I'm the boss. laughs> um, and that's what I wanted to ask you guys actually. So whoa, whoa, I, is this allowed? No, 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 like telling them like not to warn anybody about it do you think if christopher someone he close to him was on that ship do you think he would take the same precautions i think he would have like a gear malfunction in his head yeah and then i, <laughs> I think i think he'd like bust like if smoke would come the start coming out the water <laughs> but i really think i really think he wouldn't have prevented it I really think that he would he's so logical in his yeah. ways. He's so like straightforward, black and white right. in his ways. I think like, even no, if Joan was no on way. that ship, he'd be he like, he didn't care about Joan, bro. Maybe like, as no, a I'm friend. not even like Joan. Okay. Like arguably, but I'm saying Christopher. No, you're not saying it right. It's like, if Christopher, Christopher didn't die, do, do you think that, uh, you, you still think he would go with that logical approach? I'm not, I'm not saying there's an answer to this. I'm just wondering what your opinion is. I think, I think he might've prevented it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I think the reason why he became so logical is because of Christopher's death. Mm -hmm. Christopher's death caused him to mm -hmm. shut down or shut off any form of human communication and focus entirely on becoming the most logical and rational mind. Mm -hmm. Not shut down human communication, more emotions. More, emotions. more emotional, more emotional, more emotional case, emotional. right? Yeah. It's kind of like imagine if Sheldon Connections. from the Big Bang Theory, like all of his friends die. Died, yeah, okay. <laughs> He'd be a mad scientist, yeah. Like he'd just be like, whatever. Like he'd just be like, what? Like he'd just move on, not move on, but like he obviously be, he'd be so traumatized by it that he wouldn't want to connect with anyone ever again. Ever again, yeah. yep. Because again, the reason why I'm like, obviously, you might be thinking like it's not comparable because Sheldon's losing like fifteen friends and he's losing one. But keep in mind, it's that's he's losing the one friend. He like Alan had. lost one had. friend he ever had up until that point. So. It's he's kind of like in a stuck mentally speaking, he's stuck in this like complete rational case. Mm -hmm. But if Christopher was still alive, he would have never lost that human side of him that was able to love mm. to the point where he would have been like, OK, no, I have to make an exception here. Mm. Yeah, maybe because we're trying maybe. to we're trying to add like um, present day Alan with the younger Alan. Yeah. Like trying to conflate both, right? Mm, yeah. So I, that's I a think good point though that you make for sure. Like, cause his death did really change his his uh, 
sorry, his 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 life and his uh, the way uh, he approaches like human interactions and stuff. For sure. mm-hmm. But yeah, like his, I I I have to agree with Chris. Like that, that would definitely be the case. You know, he would have stopped it. Okay, I think so. Also, one random quick parentheses. Did we ever know how he died? Do we, they do they just tell Christopher? That? Yeah, they they mentioned it. He had Christ- a disease. Christopher had, had a bovine disease. tuberculosis, and then just died from yeah. it. Yeah. Mm. He gotcha. doesn't tell anyone. Gotcha. Guess that's that's know. what it was. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Thanks. Perfect. Uh, my next question, which is one I actually came up with just earlier, which was, uh, would Alan win the imitation game? Would he Would he be classified as a human? Because the oh, whole point of yeah, the imitation true, game true. is to, to be able to tell the difference between a, a man, man and a machine. A machine yeah. Would he win it? Hmm. Like what? What do you mean by like? Like he, would if, he pass as a human or like? Yeah. Would, would it like be if, some, if someone was a, facing you him, you're saying like it, if you if he will be able to fool someone else? Yeah, that he's human. Like I if think, it, if it I, was just if it I was think just, he'd be able to fool for sure. I think so. Because um, especially, know. I find it I find it very interesting too that like this um, this game right was 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 brought up during that time because the whole point of the computer was like being able to like. Uh, work with like multiple tasks and that's also like another theme of the film that I didn't quite understand especially for that time period that's like coming up with that kind of questioning I find I find was like very very interesting but I feel like it was it was too uh, um, it was too early in time to Ahead start of their thinking time? of time yeah, yeah yeah what was the question though you're asking though about like speaking to a machine and trying to figure out whether or not if you're speaking to a man or a machine like, cause machines. I mean, the, we, the, especially the machine that the he created today. was today, to compute yeah. was to compute numbers and find solutions. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it didn't even get to the point where it could start communicating. So that's why I didn't quite understand that question in the first place. Like, how did he even think of the imitation game with the machine that he had in mind that he built? You know. So that's where I was a bit confused. Although going back to the question whether he'd be able to fool someone, I think he would be just because he does lack that that sense of like sympathy and and connection are you saying he would be able to fool someone to thinking that he's a machine You're right okay 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 I'm, i thought so you were saying no so no, we're saying no to the human part so he wouldn't fool someone as a human then i think eventually because if you ask him enough questions you might be able to stump him yeah yeah possibly like if you just keep asking possibly. why you why? just like why why, why? <laughs> <laughs> cannot compute <laughs> Um, you just see smoke coming out of the back of his it's head. funny that you mentioned that because there's a line in the movie that I thought was not pertinent time wise they ask okay. if they think machines can think or something like that at some point when he built Christopher in I the, think he or someone asked him do you no, think no no it was it was in the in, in the cell in the when cell when the guy was interviewing yes, you yes, yes, like, yes do you think machines can think I'm like this is a bit ahead of your time isn't it Like, well keep in mind keep in mind this was, at the time this was like the most high tech yeah. shit but it was mean. the 1950s to be fair like, though yeah but like the, the, was the just, machine that just, he was just, designing just born I understand but the whole point of the machine that he was designing was, was so that like it's a universal built, he, it's universal but it's a it's a machine that can think ah. but just not the way that we that we think the, the problem I had was okay the imitation game is like you trying to communicate with a computer the machine that he built wasn't meant to communicate no it was just meant to I to think. process information yeah. to think and to come up with a solution it's not you can't hold a conversation with it mm. so that's that's the only thing that but I was a bit confused what's about what's interesting is that we yeah. have computers today that are like the size of a phone right like yeah. this big that yeah. can process so much faster than that yeah. than that yeah I mean, like, cause a, a giga a gigabyte of of RAM at that time would have been so freaking high. Mm. At the time, they just were working with bytes. They weren't even working with mm. kilobytes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like they a ton legit of was. For that. No, no, they yeah. legit was. They legit were. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I think, I think he might. Like I said, like I think he would eventually at some point crack. Yeah, for sure. Like you can find the crack if you ask the right questions. Mm. Like. Like if you ask, um, how, what does it feel to to be in love? Let's say, and then he might be able. He would have to I- explain something mm-hmm. in a way where you can, where you can tell that it's like only like a, only a human, a person, who, a only human. a person who has experienced. No, but love I, th- I feel like to. he's gonna try to approach that question so logically <laughs> that it's gonna feel like a Wikipedia search. Yeah, yeah, you know, like how <laughs> if I how, how to love the Wiki, Wiki, Wiki I, just, <laughs> I just thought about it. We could have done an imitation <laughs> game test here like on the spot yeah, yeah. but it would have been cool maybe for scales <laughs> <laughs> cancel our idea copyright trademark wow <laughs> 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 okay. 
All right, that's true. I completely forgot because you came up with the game from the from the get go. That's true. You are Alan Turing. Right? I am. I am Mr. Turing. <laughs> and Christopher. I Christopher. No, it's Christopher. 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 Um. What is the message of the film? No. Yes. <laughs> okay then. Okay, no. no, 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 no <laughs> Thanks for no, watching. No. <laughs> 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 what are your thoughts on it? the message of the film hmm. I think See, I was yeah, even I had a, like a tough time trying to come up with an answer for this. really yeah oh for me it was super obvious seriously oh yeah was it like the go for it sacrifice okay well sure. yeah the whole film what do you mean by that? evolves around <laughs> no it's all sacrifice it's it's doing the right thing no matter how it might affect you what are you willing to, to give up for the good of other people that's what the whole I find that's thing a bit, was, I find that's a bit obvious but obviously since this but it's is a message a, a, a pod, this is a podcast about movie analysis we have to really overanalyze the shit out of it sure like what do the apples represent <laughs> <laughs> the apples represent the fruit of life the fruit of life <laughs> and how how much and how liked Peter and Hugh and Hugh <laughs> <laughs> who looks at their kid and calls them Hugh Hubert <laughs> But sacrifice in, in in every way of the film, though, right? He he gives up uh, the normal life because that's something that they keep that they keep bringing up. It's like, yes, everybody looks for the normal life. They all everybody wants something simple. They don't want any any harm done. They don't they don't want to go out of their way for anything. But there's people extra like extraordinary like you who need to take measures that like you like you <laughs> like you um, that. Uh, are willing to s- sacrifice their well-being and like everything that they have for the well-being of other people, you know. Mm. And there's like so many hints of that throughout the mo- movie with like other other instances as well. It's not they're not all coming to mind, but Alan's turning in life was 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 that was was him giving giving his all for nothing in return. And if okay. anything, he was thrown aside for for what he did. Even I think maybe this is more of a theme than a message but i think the interplay theme of message, like yeah. human and machine really like was a like clear to me you know how the germans had their enigma how the germans had their like there was a scene where helen helen the the jones the jones jones friend friend uh she's like yeah i have my german counterpart that's t- like transcribing my messages through the german system and they're like mm. there's these humans 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 but they're all connected through machines so the morse code tapping wires the enigma machines uh, Christopher so I think the interplay of machine and human like really started there like there's a foundation in like the world right now in, in World War Two, and I think that's what it, thematically I think that's what was most, most evident to me so the interplay between humans human and, machine. and machines yeah. and the connection and how machines helped connect connect people pe- somehow in World War Two. yeah mm. And like how Helen was saying, like that I my counterpart probably has a girlfriend because he always starts with the silly, silly, silly. C- yeah. And they're like, you're not supposed to put like the same five random letters, but this guy does, and it's like it's a, a connection started there, even though that the other guy didn't know. So, but I would have figured, like, okay, well, we'll, we'll I'll talk about <laughs> that point later. <laughs> about, like. I don't know. The answer was like right in their face the whole time. But <laughs> uh, yeah, to use the silly as the in, uh, input, no? No. no. The, okay, we'll talk about I'll, this later. I'll, but I'll explain because um, I was telling Chris this earlier. So I... Wait, wait. Hold, hold that, that thought. thought. Uh, <laughs> what would be the theme? What's like the message? I think... I think it, it talks a lot about like obviously there's teamwork and then there's like the isolation of it and and it also talks about how even if work is unappreciated it's important that it's that it to be done mm. it's an unappreciated work that they did and people didn't know this for a very long time because this was like top secret for all all across the cold war like nobody knew that they cracked the the code until after the cold war was done yeah. which is when which was like in the 90s i think i'm not entirely sure but like it wasn't known for a long time that he did that. So his work went unappreciated, but he still had to do it. Yeah. At the end, you see that, that it shortened the war by two years and he saved, they estimate, four, yeah. the, and they saved, um, like, like 14, million. 14 million lives, right? Nobody else saved 14 million lives besides Alan Turing. Alan Turing. Yeah. True. So, uh, I think it, it comes down to work that is underappreciated 
sort like sewer cleaners mm. or um let's say people who do maintenance all of all over cities and stuff mm -hmm. those are people who are under underappreciated plumbers yeah. are underappreciated like people who uh power our power plants and keep everything going mm -hmm. very underappreciated truck drivers etc it's yep. work it's important work that is to be done that's not glorified by other people hmm yeah i like that true because everything they were doing there was like unglorified they didn't get any sense of like satisfaction they weren't Let's able say, to tell people they're, 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 the first thing the guy says or at the end he says it like no you, no you don't tell anything to your friends that's at the beginning you, yeah at the beginning menzi says uh if you reveal anything here you will be uh, court-martialed for heart yeah. for high treason yeah. mm. and it's funny that every day at that bell that was announcing their works their their day's work was done for nothing and not that only it was done for nothing it would go on like on um unnoticed right like they're imagine it's already going unnoticed but at midnight every day their work is out the garbage you know but like imagine like how crazy it was for them to think that like the machine wasn't the solution that they were yeah. gonna put all that like, work in until the last hour um to decipher that and calculation even, that he, if we put 10 men on this for yeah, yeah 10 men every every million, minute they every longer. minute they they assume like one um uh, they go through one yeah, code. Yeah, it would like, take them twenty million yeah. years. It would like if if you put what was it if you put ten men doing a code, doing one code, each deciphering one doing one code, deciphering one code for every minute, every minute for, for seven, seven days, days of for week 24 hours, for twenty four hours, hours a day, seven days a week. It would take them twenty mm. million years to go through every single code. Yeah. Mm. So unless the, the war can last twenty, 20 million, million years, years. <laughs> that's crazy. crazy. But like it's it's crazy to think that like they were supposed to do all of that, <laughs> and it's like let's say by miracle they managed to decipher it and mm. for one of them, that work does not matter for the following. Uh, Change the codes, yeah. It, there's no connection whatsoever. Yeah, you have to yeah, restart. Yeah. So imagine having to do that. So every that was the that was the brilliance every single of, time. of the Dang. Enigma machine. Of course. So Christopher. Christopher. <laughs> so on that note. Uh, we are going to move on to our thoughts on the film, and uh, where we'll, you will be giving a rating. Wait, sorry, I actually wanted to um, bring up. I, I mentioned this earlier to Chris because I didn't know how the Enigma machine like actually like like worked up until like uh, like a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. I actually did a bit of research about like the functioning about it because it's like you assume like okay, Enigma machine, how complicated could get could it get right? Like a letter is replaced by another letter. Very. <laughs> but do you know how it works? Yeah, roughly. The enigma. Okay, yeah. do you know how it works? Not exactly. So, okay, because in your mind, because this is how I thought. I'm like, how do you get like 159 million, 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 million settings, settings, right? Yeah. And how does that make sense? Because it's like, okay, like the A would be a B, the C would be an X, for example. It's like, how could it be that complicated? So the reason why it's so crazy complicated. So you have your your box, right? The letters already they're scrambled. So like one letter could be connected to another letter. So that's already like one, that's 26 like- 26 times 26, no? Of like 26 no? squared, I think? Squared, like tw exposant, no? 26. Yeah, uh, that's how many possibilities you would have, no? No, not that much. No, not not just from that. Okay, not okay, just, okay, not okay, just from okay. that. I think it's like 26 squared or something. Okay. But anyways, already regardless, that's already a lot. So imagine you have that. The rotors that they're talking about, you know there's like the three, uh, the three things that spin. Yeah. Okay, so the way that it works, Say that you type a letter. Say you type on Y. The letter that comes out, it's a random letter. Let's say mm -hmm. it's an S. If you press on Y again, what letter is going to pop up? Not S. So another one. So what happens is the rotors, every time you press it, it spins. So it oh, rotates shit. and it changes the letter. So the more you do it, the more it spins, the same letter. So it's never going to come out the same letter. Once that rotor does a full rotation, the second one spins turns so you're not going to get the same set a second time. second time so then it does another random one and then once this one does a full rotation then the third one third does, does a full so that's why it's like impossible to crack it because not just not just one letter just having is like that, every letter not just that they could also have three to five rotors and mm. every morning the enigma machines had to be synced up because you have to send what your thing looks like to the other person so they that they could do the inverse Mm. So that their Enigma machine can decode it. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to send out your gear positions, your letter positions to the other person that has the Enigma so that they would know how to decode it. Like the machine would do it in reverse. Right. So if you type their Y, it would come out your A or whatever. Mm. But wait, how how did they come up with the codes? How did the German come up with the codes and the certain tabs to use every day? That I'm not too sure. I uh, know they had like 
the settings, I'm not too sure how they came up with it, but I know there was like settings that were sh- sent out across the field so that Enigma machine workers could communicate together. Like there was a there was a preset of the day or something. They would have like, oh, your A is supposed to be on the B. This is supposed to be on the B. You're supposed to be using four rotors. And that's how they would give it. The well, no, it was always rotors. three rotors. Well, there's some that had five, if I'm not mistaken. No, they they well, said that they well, said well, that if they in- cracked the machine, they would they would they yeah, would change it gear. to gotcha. probably yeah. But but you understand though, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's like every time the letter switches. So it's like I like that's crazy. It's crazy. Man. It's crazy. Wow. But yeah, so it's uh, time to pull out the notes. <laughs> so that's why, because I know what point you were gonna make earlier about like oh, it's just like use use like the. Because, like, for example, it was um, Hail Hitler and, and uh, uh, yeah. the weather, the right? Weather. That's, like, always in the same... Yeah. Like, they could have just used that constantly, but it's, like... They needed the machine. Well, even, even if you have that hint, you couldn't... You, you Still, with that, you wouldn't be able to yeah. decipher it by hand. Like, it's impossible. No, what I'm saying is that, like... I'm not saying whether or not they could decipher by hand if they had that knowledge. Mm. They obviously did. What I'm saying is that they could have put that into Christopher much earlier. Yeah, uh, yeah. But the machine wasn't built, right? Like I guess no, the machine was built, no, no, but then the they were still trying. They had to a play. month to oh, try to figure. Oh yeah, it was just going nonstop, like yeah. randomly. Yeah, it would have still worked, by the way. After w- some point, but like it would have taken. So that's why you have the rotors. So notice how, like, I don't know if you paid attention, but like each rotor three had sets. like the letters. Mm-hmm. So that's why when they're rotating, and then you see like There's one full rotation, yeah. then that one rotates. So that's to like uh, reflect how the Enigma machine actually works. But they're doing so they just things. recreated an Enigma, Enigma, an Enigma but, uh, machine, but much really bigger, much bigger, version, much yeah. bigger that tr- that figures out what the Enigma because the Enigma okay. machine is manual, they, right? Yeah. So you just set it, mm-hmm. but this one like thinks of. How it, uh, it's, it's kind of brute forced its way into an enigma like yeah. it tried you know how like hackers let's say brute forced they went to a password just like try the password of 20 different variations right. of the password mm-hmm. that's literally what it did like every single letter of the alphabet three times just switching but the does beauty of it does this work does this work does, yeah. this work does this work you know but the beauty of it is, is it eliminates yeah uh like it, it eliminates like uh, situations where like okay this wouldn't work so then it would like cut down and then like build its way closer and closer to the answer. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. This is without screens too. Imagine nothing, <laughs> yeah. nothing. Like he doesn't know, it doesn't have a Google Windows display time, how much time it's going to take for it to encrypt, you know? <laughs> like it doesn't, doesn't have, have a green percentage bar. bar. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, I might get fired today. <laughs> That's all right. I might get fired. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, so, so you yeah. had your... Uh, Historical, historical inaccuracies and they are mostly in those little like CGI bits that they were doing and I hated that CGI bits so let me get started like the war scenes yes oh yes, yes, uh, yes, yeah yes, okay yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, so in the first time. part there was like these uh, they were saying that Britain was starving because they were had uh, America was sending them bread and stuff and their their U-boats kept attacking them yeah the first of all that's R- wrong I don't know if you have a <laughs> yeah, yeah. guy saying wrong uh, wrong <laughs> they uh, U-boats did hunt in wolf packs, but they didn't hunt in like six or seven of them. And you can see on the screen, like they're like right next to each other, like just shooting torpedoes randomly. That's not how they hunted. They always had a strategy Wrong. for them. Yes. They always Wait, had so a strategy. You're, ta- you're talking about the, the Germans? Like the how Germans. they would hunt down? The- exactly. Okay, okay. Yeah. There, there's, this, there's just this one scene. There's like a that guy, a sailor talking to another guy smoking a cigarette. Then you see like it goes underwater and there's like just five U-boats just standing there shooting their torpedoes. That's not how it worked. Okay. They would always strategize. They're literally always working around. like wolves literally looking like wolves there was always one that used to flank and there's always two or three main hit attacking ones you, it's just like they're, just, they're not just like five of them together oh let's just, let's just shoot in one direction yeah, see what happens you let's know? just blow up one boat use you know like, use all of our torpedoes one shot one shot okay okay but so um but like the inaccuracy is in the way that they did it, but like they would still sink their U boats. Exactly, they would still sink the okay. bread carrying ships and whatnot. Okay, yes, because you need, you need destroy. Like, like, cause I don't know okay, if you know, I I know, if you know anything about, about okay. ships or whatever, but it's kind of like a tic tac. I know that they thing. float on water, and it's a kind of like a tic tac toe nice. kind of thing. Not tic tac toe, sorry, rock paper scissors, mm-hmm. where it's like there's battleships, submarines, and then destroyers. So the battleships get sunk by the submarines the submarines get sunk by the the destroyers and the destroyers get sunk by the battleships battleships mm-hmm. so the, the the british didn't have enough destroyers in their navy so uh, so they were getting fucked by badly. destroyers by, no, by the u-boats by the uh, u-boats okay. the u-boats are like half submarine half boats okay i see so they're they're, they're boats that can go underwater basically yeah. but they don't last as long as submarines do submarines usually last a lot longer longer exactly okay. but That's uh, one. but but Coming back to like there was also um, the point to be made. Th- some of the tanks that they that they had in the shots, 
were like they said in 1941 they had like tigers and whatever i rewatched that scene so many times and i have to confirm those were panzer fours i i could like at first i'm like that's not right there's not supposed to be a tiger next to a panzer four but then i realized no they kind of screwed up the the imaging of the bodies there were two panzer fours i remember the exact panzer fours yeah yeah they're just the extended turrets or whatnot that they had that they had like a small armor piece in the back that made it look like a tiger, but there were just Panzer IVs. I'm like, that tiger's not supposed to be there. I went back, I'm like, that's Panzer IV. Okay. I'll let that go and go. But did they have Panzer IVs fighting against the British? Where would they be fighting in the, I guess, like in France and like... But did they have Panzer IVs really in France that much? I mean, they had most of them in the Africa theater. Uh, but that was not Africa, it was exactly. like dirt. So I don't know what they were... And it didn't look hilly, so it can't be Greece. I know, I know. So I'm not too sure about that. I don't I I think they would have some. Uh, in 1941, the tech was still evolving. They had their, like, the small light tanks. They didn't really have to come out yet with, like, the... The heavy... The heavy hitters, Tigers, uh, King Tigers, Panthers. Please. I'm not sure those ones, those were out yet. Ferdinand. <laughs> Ferdinand. <laughs> um, so, yeah. It's the biggest piece of dog <laughs> shit. <laughs> you know the. I don't know if you know anything about cars or like um, or they engines. They go room, but but uh, they use the petrol electric generator for a tank, which you use usually for like a bus at that time. Okay. But the tank was like sixty something tons. Right. And that the, the, the generator like- the <laughs> generator would catch on fire when the car tried. <laughs> And then we just move and then explode. Yeah, fun fact: Porsche had the, made the engines for most of the German. Oh, tanks. you're kidding! Yeah, that's why oh people don't like God. to drive Porsches because they made the tanks for the German army. Yeah, Mercedes yeah, Benz also made. They were yeah. They made the planes, right? Yeah, and Boss made the uh, apparel for the Nazis. You, well, they didn't. Boss, really? Hugo Boss. Yeah, they, produced, they, produced they produced it. They didn't. They produced they it. They didn't design it. They produced it. Yeah. Uh, another inaccuracy. Let's get back on topic. There is a scene where you would just cut from like a German invasion picture to American bombs being dropped. Like it, if someone didn't look at it, like from because it, it passes by fast. I went back to look at it. You look, the bomb bay opens up and it's Americans bomb, American bombs being dropped. I'm not too sure if it was wanted because they're talking about how the German were, were advancing towards the British and these air raids. Another one. Uh, British towns knew about air raids from like almost the get-go. At first they were caught off guard, but then they were told to shut off their lights at night so they would mess up the German navigators, like the viewports. They wouldn't see where the cities were. Mm-hmm. And in the shot, you see that their lights are on. So like how early yeah. on is this, is this in the war? Is it like in 1939? Well, yeah, I thought we were in 1941. Yeah, but, but 30, also, no, it was 39. 39. It was 39. I'll, 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 cause remember when he went to do the interview? Uh, I remember there was a train set. It was 39, 39. And that was also when they were showing the bombings gotcha, happening. Gotcha, going gotcha. To the, there you go, but gotcha, also, gotcha. but also keep in mind, um, Britain wasn't necessarily starving. They were like heavily rationed, mm. but they, the way they talked about it was as if okay, like well, they weren't getting, they weren't getting any food any whatsoever. Food. Yeah. They had to like start, but like, like the Germans rarely ever met like their monthly goals as to the amount of tonnage Sinking. to sink. Yeah. 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 They did sink a lot though. They, but, su- yeah. they sank a lot, but like they didn't, didn't meet that tonnage requirement and i heard also um it's from a channel called eastery okay so it's like like history but eastery Eastery, okay like ea story ea it's in the game you know those uh videos of like um up like what was it um the eastern front every year and then you see all the divisions moving around. yeah he made those videos Mm -hmm. and it's really cool he made one he made videos on like plans to win world war ii of each each of the countries okay oh wow. and one of the things okay, he wow. so one of the things he, he did was um on germany and basically germany's plan to win the war was to starve britain out it makes sense so via the, using the u-boats it makes sense so the u-boats um because of the amount of tonnage they sank which was like, i think 20 something million tons Jeez. tonnage of uh of stuff that they sank they managed to delay the invasion of normandy by a year that's crazy that's <laughs> so crazy that's actually crazy. Yeah, but even then, they weren't ready. No. Do you no. think that, like, if if this whole, uh, like, enig- if they didn't crack Enigma, do you think that the Germans would have had a chance to win? Because they, they keep no. mentioning, because no. they, ke- they keep mentioning at the start that, like, this no, war, we're not winning. That's no, not no, what they messed up. <laughs> no, no, because here's the thing. It wouldn't have been a favorable win for Britain, as favorable as it was. Okay. So, if, because the Germans... Um, they still had other issues in mind. They still had other issues in play. They, they had a lack of manpower. They had a lack of fuel. They had a lack of material, generally speaking. Mm. 
So they weren't able, and, and logistically speaking, trying to invade Russia, all those vast distances, you have to cover that by train. The, Ger- the Russians the used different, in, <laughs> not, in, not, not just in the winter, the Russians had different gauges on their tracks, on their train tracks, because Russian trains were bigger. So they have to narrow down the tracks, but German trains can't run as long as Russian trains. So now they have to build supply depots and supply dumps for all of the trains. They have to build all that shit. The the bottle it get it, the bottleneck of the supplies was crazy in in Russia. That's why the Germans were freezing in the winters mm-hmm. because there weren't enough winter clothes. It's not like they didn't produce the winter clothes. They did. It just they couldn't get through it because of all the the ammunition that they needed the the food and whatever. Yeah. They couldn't get all of those in time, and because it was it was always trafficly jammed and shit. It was a multitude of things. They lost the Africa theater. They lost all those oil fields. They stopped having oil and gas for their tanks when they had uh, withdrawn from there. They started the they started a uh, Eastern Front for some odd reason. I don't know why Hitler really wanted to push like a like a I don't know like a little jab to uh, to uh, Stalin. He really wanted to capture the city of um, Stalingrad. Stalingrad just because it was named after him. That city had zero zero. Tactical advantage. He literally he just, he just, wanted. He could have just sat him. outside. He could have literally just sat. Just, he could have just sat them. outside the city and then just allowed the. But no, the, the, Hitler being Hitler really wanted to jab Stalin and try to capture his city named Stalingrad. I don't think it was named Stalingrad. It I was think they the, named no, no, no. They sta- Len- they, no, no. It was still Stalingrad. Leningrad was uh, Saint Petersburg. Gotcha. Yeah, exactly. And that was under siege for nine hundred days. There you go. So he literally captured that city, or didn't actually. That's where they. No, no. He at one point he they, they did. Oh, they yeah, did they're, they're actually. Uh, they did of, uh, capture the city, but they were so battered at that point, and because they, the German line generally was relatively strong, but because they were bringing so many troops into the city, the the lines were all supplemented by Italians, Romanians, who didn't really want to be there, and they didn't have anti tank weapons. True. So then, when the when the Soviets came in with Operation Uranus, <laughs> what? <laughs> the operation was called Uranus. They encircled the Germans. And just starved them, basically. and then just like left them there, and then like ninety, like over a hundred thousand Germans were uh, like, uh, captured, surrendered, surrendered, and they were enclosed within that city. Um, and um, what was I? It? I also because they were in the city and they were sieged for so long. They were they were at one point they were eating two and a half slices of bread per day. Crazy, they had that. They were gonna starve them. Well, and well, no, because they they were they weren't allowed to surrender. Right, so, so were the Russians, by the way. When the Germans first attacked, Stalin's order was like to the last man, like you're gonna die in this city, is what he said to the to his soldiers, and that's why they were at but some Stalin point they said were it holding to his soldiers. Stalin said to his Russian soldiers that you're gonna die in the city, that you're not surrendering. You're like oh, you're wow. not taking Stalingrad. Like, like you're no, dying. No like you're land. not leaving. No one's out and no one's uh, surrendering. So the the river on Stalingrad near Stalingrad is called the Volga mm-hmm. River, and he's like no land beyond the Volga. No. Okay. It's because they were they kept retreating because like Russia's big, right? Yeah. Big. And uh big. and because they kept retreating and retreating, like Russia uh, they they lost a lot of like the really valuable territory like like Ukraine, which was a big breadbasket for mm-hmm. the for the Russians. And um they they said, Okay, no, no, we have to stop them here. This is yeah. where we have to stop them. Like just right outside Moscow, like we have to stop them here. Uh but also but coming back to the movie. Um, one of the inaccuracies is that they said that they broke Enigma and then they just broke it. <laughs> so the, the Germans, the Germans so found out about so it. So dramatized that scene. Oh, the Germans kidding. found out. So then they updated Enigma, but then they broke it again. Yeah. Okay. The, yes, I the think groundwork I was set already this, yeah. for it to right. get break, broken again. Like the machine was there. It's just going to learn again to yeah. break it. Okay. It's but crazy. did they find out the second time that it was broken? I don't uh, think they bothered. No, 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 no. They didn't know. Uh, but like the... They yeah. used, but the way they used the the, the intelligence was extremely smart. Who? Like the like the, 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 Br- the, the British, British. the British okay. used the intelligence in a very intelligent way. Uh-huh. <laughs> Big brain, no pun intended, <laughs> daddy. Uh, and the way they used it, they they um, before D Day, the landings, the um, they made this because the closest point from Britain to France is not Normandy. It's where the, the D-Day landings happen, it's the Pas de Calais, which Calais is like, I don't know how fucking far it is, but yeah. like it's it's very close by. So they made this whole plan, this whole operation, to make a, a fake army near that area of Britain that's close to, to France to show that that's where the actual attack is happening. And what they did is they they made fake, they, they, they produced fake radios that, that were easily deciphered. They made it where the king visited 
that spot to they put up balloon tanks they put up balloon tanks oh yes balloon, i remember you know, this to stage a, la- a stage uh, uh, a thing and they're like yeah, oh yeah, that's yeah. totally what we're gonna do we're gonna go, yeah no, the, bro- the king the tanks. king went there uh Patton, like the uh the american generals like was there as well like he said like he was the commanding officer there and he's like the biggest he was like the biggest general uh in that the- theater for the americans so they did all of that just to fool the germans yeah, and they also for for Italy, let's say, or for like the Mediterranean, they fooled th- them thinking that an attack was going to happen in, in Greece, Greece yeah. instead of Italy. Mm, crazy stuff. So that's, that's actually I don't. If someone has to quote me on this or fix me. Like the, I don't think they had an Enigma machine in 1939. I thought the first one was captured from a U boat that surrendered. That's what I know. I heard. I didn't know because in the movie it starts with, "Oh, this is a Polish uh, thing." No, no, no. I no, think I heard of Polish something thing. about the, Pol- the Polish. The, 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 Polish, po- the Polish thing was was um, what the uh, the computer or the Alan, the Turing machine was based off of. Because Alan Turing said that the the machine that I want to build, oh, Christopher, right. sorry, sorry, was sorry, sorry, is sorry. based off of a Polish but then, like but variation. Then they already but had an Enigma better. in their shop. I thought the yeah. only one, the first one, was captured like in 1941. That's what I thought. I guess that's no, what. no, no. Well, uh, he, he made it. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure exactly, sorry, exactly but like, like, correct me on that. I'm not sure because I I've heard of a story that the first one they captured was when a U-boat surrendered, so came to the top, and they had an Enigma machine inside, and they rushed it out. To start and try to decode it. Mm-hmm. That's, this is this is a story that you heard like from like, outside the movie. Outside or? the movie. Outside the movie. Okay. And in the movie, they had one already in like nineteen. The, when the program yeah, started, they had an Enigma machine on the table. Right. That's what I was confused. I'm like, okay, I guess they already had one. I don't know. That listen, I'm like, I don't know anything. I'm I'm like not I'm like I'm not very good with history. So like everything that happened in the movie, that's all I know. <laughs> Some basic. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like what, whatever you guys are telling me now, this is all new information for me. So that, what, that's what, another thing I wanted to ask you guys as well, since like you, you guys seem to know a lot about World War Bali. II. So like obviously like they didn't like the British, the US, they didn't have amazing relations with the with the Soviets. But like, why was it such a big thing for them that like there were Soviet spies within Bletchley? You know, it's because they knew that after the war, the the Soviets they might have wanted communism. To use- they might have, yeah, that too. Communism mainly because, yeah. like, they they had problems with communism throughout um, the twenties and thirties, but also it's because the Soviets, um, like the Ch- Churchill, didn't trust the Soviets. Mm. He even thought about uh, having a fight against the Soviets after World War Two, but then, like, obviously, all the generals are like, "No, you were t- you're fucking you're fucking Bozo. stupid." You're, you're, fu- <laughs> you're fucking stupid. stupid. Like they were gonna fight against like five million sur- Soviet soldiers in Germany. <laughs> like, like nah, gee. Uh, but they just had. They just. It was the ideological difference. Yeah, mainly. wasn't it really just like the communism aspect? Yeah. they knew that was gonna be a problem in the future. They didn't want it. They wanted yeah. to like kill the what do you call it? The ro- nip the rose in the bud, or whatever. Yeah, like the nip rose. it in the bud. Yeah, right. they really didn't want communism to come to Britain. It was already there, but they didn't want it to spread as I a see. wildfire. And then, of course, we know what happened. They in also the Cold wanted. War. Yeah, they also wanted to use like they wanted to be able to use Ultra, which was their version of the Enigma machine. Yeah, exactly. They wanted to use Ultra against the Soviets in the future. And that's why they wait. So sorry, the Ultra was what? Ultra was the, was the was the their version of Enigma. So their decrypting okay. code, their decryptors are called Ultra. Again. So um, yeah. Also, I want to. This is like different. This is back to the U boats, um, because they wanted to sink. Uh, they wanted to sink the U boats. Wanted to sink merchant ships. like merchant ships and stuff. And obviously, you can't put mines because mines are like. Um, underneath underneath right not gonna hit the ships well like underneath the ships but it's easy to spot right you just like you fly over it and right, you see right, it and right, you just right. shoot at the mine and it blows up so what they came up with the germans was a uh, a magnetic mine so it would detect right. the mag the magnetic signature of the ship and like then the steel. Bl- and then would blow, up would blow up oh wow from underneath the ship and you know how the the <laughs> this is the you know how um uh, the British managed to counter it. This I'm not sure. Uh, they made- a German, a German accidentally, a German pilot accidentally dropped one at low tide on a beach, and it just didn't like sink. And they were able to like figure it they, out. They they were so they were able to pick it out <laughs> and then degloss the ship. So then degloss the ships. So then like it's completely useless. Useless, bro. Yeah. Bruh, <laughs> someone messed up. <laughs> someone it's interesting, up, like dude. how these things come around, right? Yeah. Well, it's. It's it's weird because 
it's it's in it's kind of the difference it's a the reverse when it comes to enigma right so the germans came up with this highly advanced tech mm-hmm. with enigma that's not very expensive to produce and the 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 uh, british had to use something had to counter it with something really expensive true but the difference is with with that and like let's say when it comes to weapons <clears throat> is that the Brit- the germans were making this incredibly advanced like like magnetic mine and it was just countered by like just simply deglossing the ship like they made one that was like an acoustic torpedo which is basically a torpedo that's meant to go to hit the rotor ship's of, a, of a ship's prepare oh, ship yeah. the audio audio levels and just follow that so what they did to counter that they just made a tube that made way more noise that, like and put it way behind that just made way more noise <laughs> so that it would track that so then it would travel there so some little pipes some fucking pipes beat this like highly advanced <laughs> German tech I mean you can just look at the V1s you know the rockets that they started sending on to the British they literally when the planes ran out of ammo to shoot them down you could literally just go and tip it and it would just fall out of the sky <laughs> that's that's what they resorted to when they were out of ammo you, they were, the Spitfires would go next to the V1s just tap it with their wing and it would just fully <laughs> the inside gyro would lose it because it's fully crashed you know? I'm just like oh, oh that's look, I made rocket yeah I can just tip it bro like, that's it's crazy funny, bro. it's crazy uh, but I think uh, do you have any other thoughts or uh, let me let them? me check really quick but I, uh, so like we're talking about mainly about the inaccuracies but we didn't actually get onto our thoughts about the film yeah like, I'm scared that like to deviate too much but I'm, I'm interested to see if there's oh, any like, other inaccuracies okay but, like the inaccuracies they weren't like events in the film that they said that happened that just didn't then happen then again I'm pretty there's sure more, the like, Enigma you know. cracking was over dramatized I don't know how to say that over dramatized you know how when they started running from one place to the other but no, no I think that, I think if they happened. were stumped for that long and he figured out and you have like this epiphany no I think it's a pretty big deal dude I mean like they managed to it again, I don't know how accurate the stats know. were but like when they're saying that they shortened the, the war by two oh, years yeah yeah no no I'm just saying the yeah. film like when they started running from one place to the other oh we cracked it and then they went back to the thing to try to decode it to try to find the Heil Hitler and the good morning yeah yeah you know I think it was that dr- dramatic in real life you know I, I mean, don't to know. be fair they're saving lives dramatic. by doing it yeah right? I'm sure so. it was I'm sure. I don't know I don't know stupid uh so yeah any other any thoughts on what are your thoughts on the film itself like besides the historical inaccuracies um very well put together film Mm -hmm. um are we talking like thematic wise character wise Uh, uh, anything i think the castings were very nice and i think uh benedict cumberbatch Cumberbatch. (laughs) benedict what (laughs) cucumberland uh very good cast (laughs) (laughs) very good cast um storyline was very good it's a rewatchable movie yeah. is what I've noticed. It's f- oh, it moves yeah. fast. It moves fast, right? I was like, oh my God, it's a two-hour movie. I, like, I can't sit through this again. It passed by so quickly. I right? was so surprised. Like, I remember I was watching it and I was watching it on my phone then I moved to the TV. You're like, oh my God, it's like 20 minutes left or something. No, no like I, I, was, I started watching it and I was like, okay, I'm five minutes and whatever. I put it on my TV. I'm like 20 minutes and I'm like, what the fuck? What happened? What, what happened to this movie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's, it's, it's kind crazy. of like a, across the Spider-Verse. Uh, where that movie is like two and a half hours long, but it oh, dude, it feels like it, it, it feels like an hour. It feels okay, like an hour and yeah. a half. No, yeah. it's a rewatchable, very well put together. It's a historical piece which I love. Uh, so mm-hmm. that's a good point on my uh, two, checklist, which I also love. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yes, I love uh, war. I love war. <laughs> <laughs> you bazzy. Uh, I'm gonna come. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's pretty much my thoughts. I really like the movie. It's rewatchable. It's crazy. I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough. It gets everywhere. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Uh, I think it was you? a terrible movie. Ah oh, shit! Okay. Out of time. Okay. Yeah. Liar! Uh, <laughs> I have. <laughs> Thanks. I'm gonna be honest. I think this is probably one of my favorite. Like, it's not my favorite. It's one of my favorite movies for sure. Like, I can't tell you how the amount of times I've seen this movie. Like, Actually, yeah. Nice, nice. But like, not like just sat down and like watched it. Like, oh my god, let's rewatch it again. Like, I. I've lost track how many times like at school I'd just be studying and have it on the background while I'm working oh, just wow. to listen to it. It's beautiful. It's I love, yeah, you love hearing Alan a, Turing it's study. It's amazing. <laughs> Yo, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> okay, no, but bro, you have to say like, like Benedict Cumberbatch. Like, yeah, his no, voice he, he is, is like, like Benedict I'm gonna bro, come. Cumberbatch. Dude, it's literally <laughs> like, I'm going, yeah. <laughs> but no, he's, bro, his acting was amazing. I love his voice too and everything. But I'm, okay, yeah, the actors oh. aside, the, 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 the the movie itself was so beautifully written. There were mm. so many like thematic choices choices that they played with that just it was worked. very well shot. 
Mm. Beautifully shot. There was um one of the things I wanted to mention uh oh, it's slipping my mind. <laughs> what was I gonna say? Stupid. Oh, I forgot. Um no but yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> Um, before this movie, because again, I'm, I'm not like va- that much into history as much as I find it fascinating. All these things do interest me. It's like, it's not something that I go out of my way for. And especially before I wasn't a big, big fan, but ever since I watched this movie and I, as well as others as well, like all quite on the Western front that Chris showed me, um, I started, <laughs> I started enjoying more and more and looking for like war movies, not because of like the, the violence or because like things about That's the cool. war movie, <laughs> war movies, like it's, it's, it's not, it's not just like the, the tanks and stuff that interests me. It's really the, the fact that you're, you're facing so many, like cr- so many like of these moral dilemmas mm. and it really challenges yeah. your thinking. And it's like, it's, it's really like in these Schindler's movies list. that, huh? It's kind of like Schindler's List. Which I have to see as well, man. Yeah, that that movie I have to see. But I, I, I heard about it. And like, it's very good. Very interested. So it's with yeah. Qui-Gon. So it really. Oh, it's him. Yeah. yeah it's no way. Hey. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. Now I have to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. So it, it, it gives you the opportunity to like test, test your way of thinking mm-hmm. with these kinds of things. So it's like, and from the from the viewpoint of, a, of cinematography, so much, so much, so much potential. And I feel like again, the movie was beautifully shot. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the thematic. It was um, it's it's something that a lot of people can relate to, but it's also like historically like uh, like it's it's very cool to learn as well. Um, but just overall, man, there's there's a lot of things I liked about mm-hmm. the movie. Some things like ob- because obviously there's always negatives. It, not, nothing is perfect. Uh, a couple of things that I I had a bit of a hard time like agreeing with was um, I was so much for the. Um, them like showing like the the issues with like segregation, how like uh, like the hom- homosexual uh, communities as well as like like the, they have to be very underground. Oh man, shit. like yeah, like dude, imagine living during a time like that, man. Mm. It's it's terrible. I think you could have they could have re- extended yeah. the movie by like 20, 30 minutes. Easy, easy. and they could have and, and it would have been expanded more very, on that. You're saying, yeah, uh, mm. yeah. Any any other? No, no. But just to say, like the problem, I, I didn't have a problem with that, but because they, they also brought like um, the place of a woman. Uh, as well which mm. I thought was like super important because back then they didn't have a voice they couldn't do anything and I love what they did with the Jones character um, but then there were like cer- certain points that, that felt forced where it's like instead of finding an opportunity to like uh, focus on like um, Alan Turing's like issues with socializing and stuff like for example I don't know if you remember that scene where they were at the bar and Jones was like oh is this your team and he's like should we say hi to them and he says no it's like hello and then like she, she talks whatever and it's like how did you get him to like you and then she responds with, because I'm a woman in a man's world and I don't have the luxury of, of, uh, of being an ass. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? How did that answer the question? <laughs> so it's like, if you're things like ass, that felt forced. If you're an but, ass regardless. Like, it doesn't <laughs> like how, what? Yeah, 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 I get it, <laughs> but, I get so it. stuff like that felt stuff forced. Like that. Small, small stuff Very like that, yeah. sm- But like the rest of it, how like she had a hard time getting in. is like, oh, the secretary's office is office upstairs. upstairs. I'm like, I love that. that. That was like very well done. Yeah, they underestimated so, her yeah. because like she's a woman and like she's like, yeah, exactly like, clearly the sm- one so again like that whole like, idea of like segregation being felt being left out the same way alan turing was, was and felt, like was being felt. being uh yeah exactly and just being ignored and like uh invisible to, to to everybody um but yeah again some parts were forced that's one thing that coming to mind there were a couple of other instances mm-hmm. as well but other than that man it was beautiful mm-hmm. very well done yeah. what are your thoughts chris <laughs> what uh, are your thoughts Christopher? my my thoughts is like i would agree with both of you it's very well shot uh very well scripted the script is amazing um, the score is very good as well. The score, uh, yo, the oh score. the music, oh the my score. gosh, uh, beautiful. Wait, it, it's it's uh, it's Hans Zimmer, right? Hans is it? Is it? I'm not sure. It's a good question. Can you? I don't have my phone on me. Uh, I think it's also oh, not beautiful. one thing. One thing I uh, one of my big complaints about the movie is that it it moves really fast, a bit too fast. I find. Yeah. Oh, uh, another thing I want to mention. So sorry, I don't want to cut you off. Um. The fact that they were jumping back and forth with time. The first time I watched it confused me a lot. The detective scenes with what was happening. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that was like it, it. It felt it felt weird and like uh, it's it's hard to like really place yourself during like. Uh, I think what was it's. I think as long as they time it properly, if they just keep referring to the year, I think that's fine. But it, sometimes they weren't doing that, and it was difficult sometimes to tell the difference between uh, when he's 
in the 40s and then when he's in the 50s mm. right and Those who's jumps. the who's the so the music producer is alexandre Despl Desplat, Desplat, and it was the london symphony orchestra yeah so it. they're all it was all actually um it's a british movie mm -hmm. primarily no <laughs> 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 what imitation game have you been watching yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it was moving a bit too fast like when i was writing notes i was having a hard time keeping up because mm. when i was thinking about this point another point was made and then by the time i was done writing it another point was made so it was right. kind of like it moves a bit too fast it's but like it, a christopher nolan movie where you have to like rewatch it three times, <laughs> three times yeah. Yeah. but, but this, is a, this is the kind of movie you can watch it once or twice and then understand it very well mm. yeah but uh, like you said christopher nolan movies like you have to watch it. it's like First time you watch it, you're like, wait, what? And then huh? the second time, I was like, oh, I kind of get it. And then the third time, I was like, whoa. And, and you're, like, yeah, you're, like, you're like Zuko when he discovers the other firebenders. Like, <laughs> like I understand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but now we're going to get on to the rating. So it's like a one out of five. So the lowest rating is... It's the biggest piece of dog shit. <laughs> the number for two out of five, it's. I mean, it's all right. Like <laughs> three out of five, it's. <laughs> four out of five is. How about the blow? And then five out of five. Is <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. How about the blow? <laughs> so yeah, I'll definitely give it a four out of five. How about the blow? How about the blow? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Not yeah. for me, it's the goat, dude. Oh, it's the yeah, goat. Yeah, hundred percent. That's what I'm talking about. Again, like, That's why he's there, baby. <laughs> it's like I like I mean like I said I've seen it so many times like I just love this movie. Nice, you okay. guys. I like I really like it as a movie. I don't. It's not my favorite war movie though. Oh my God. Same. It's not Same. my favorite. That's no. why okay. I'll okay. What, what what would you guys say is better? Downfall. <laughs> But did, did you say All Quiet was better than Downfall though? In different ways. Okay. in a different way it's better it, in different ways it's better but I like Downfall because of the drama it doesn't focus a lot there is the violent aspects of it of like the war itself you see right. that in aspects but Downfall is more of like a psychological thing mm -hmm. and I like psychological gotcha. things much more mm -hmm. but it's also but there's you think also so? well I mean I haven't seen the movie so I, I can't compare well it's, for me it's, the thing, it, the thing that really it, it yeah. tackles a really difficult position right okay. so there was someone who said this oh, I forget the name of the channel but it's it's a uh, I think it's Life is a Story. Okay. That's the name of the channel. He said, like, the interesting part is not Downfall trying to depict Hitler as this evil, evil monster, monster yeah. but uh, trying to depict Hitler as this flawed human being who is, who is seen as a god. Right. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, and basically the whole world crashing around him. Mm -hmm. So you see the people who are really Closest devoted to, to him, him and, yeah. and who, who die by him. Mm. And then you see the people who are like, who try to grab the power for themselves, who mm -hmm. try to power, get grab, I guess, that godhood almost uh, for themselves. Right. Yeah. That's why I like Downfall so much as a movie. Uh, not just because it's one of my most <laughs> shows. Uh, <laughs> uh, what about you, Harad? For me, it's, it's, diff it's I difficult. Bet it, I bet it's Jarhead. I, I don't want it to be, I don't want it to be too long, but like, uh, let's say cinematically would be 1917. Because how it's shot. I have to watch that okay. too. Okay. Uh, it, it was one shot, the whole thing, right? It's not really one Two shot. Two shots. It's a couple of shots. They lied to you about, like, you can tell where Because I haven't seen shots. it, but I heard there's like one point where he like faints or something. Yeah. And then it goes to another shot. I think it's a couple of shots. I don't think it's two shots. I think they're trying well, to sell it. <laughs> like they're trying, maybe it's like four it's or mostly five. In, oh, okay. It's mostly in one shot. It's mostly in one okay, shot. Okay, okay. And like, like, they so like impressive, bro, for like and a, you what, see an the hour and a half, two hour long movie. Yeah, it's uh, almost two hour long wow. movie. Wow, like that's An crazy. hour 40 something. Yeah. Imagine trying to remember a script for an hour imagine, and 40. Imagine, imagine. And Benedict Cumberbatch is in that movie too. True, 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 true. He's an annoying general. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> Wait. The, Cinematically, <laughs> unlike the other annoying <laughs> <from a> fucking <laughs> Tywin Lannister motherfucker. Uh, cinematically, 1917. Casting wise, Fury. It's a 2014 Fury. tank yeah. movie yeah. because yeah. I love the casting they did in that. It's like a, it's like a, it's basically like a what do you call it? an Avengers movie of like war. It's like every yeah. every five star like actor is under Brad, Brad Pitt, Shia LaBeouf, uh, Ant Man's Shia sidekick. Man. What's his name? Uh, Ant Man's sidekick. Ant -Man sidekick. You know the, the, the not the sidekick, the, but like the, his driver thing. The, the the Hispanic guy. What's his name? Uh, I know what you're talking about, but okay. I don't know his name. Yeah, uh, Brad Pitt, uh, Shia LaBeouf. It was like an all-star. Um, uh, the Punisher. What's his name, bro? Yes, uh, the Punisher, Frank Castle. Frank Castle. It's an all-star. It's an all-star uh, casting. That's why I love that movie. Psychological movie would be. Uh, tell me, all Apocalypse Now. Apocalypse Now. Ah, that's very good too. It's a movie. I I know we're short for time, but it's a movie. You're gonna want to watch it. 
they have four hours of film and they use three hours of it as the movie. It's a psychological thriller movie of the Vietnam War, of a man going through that war. Whoa. Yeah, that's why I love that movie because it's so psychological. I, I think you watched it, right? I watched it. We were going to do a show on it, but then like I was like, I have to rewatch it like three times in order for me to fully understand but you can't find it See? anywhere you can find yeah. it on youtube though yeah it's 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 hard to find that movie so that that's a, that's my top three movies i'd like okay. to let's say because I, I can't just say one movie that they all have something that of I course like. of course yeah yeah, yeah. No, so, but I for me it. for me we downfall all quiet i've seen that one all quiet on the western all front. quiet i've seen downfall after rewatch i think i watched it when i was like a while ago i'm not it's on uh, amazon prime <laughs> You know, I know that by heart, right? You, you, the whole thing still. <laughs> like the first I used to. Part, the first part, I like, to. I can... I can... <laughs> yeah, okay, that's right. Uh, well, I'm trying to think. That one's good. A Full Metal Jacket, I really Full like. Metal Jacket, psychological, if you like psychological okay. movies. Uh, the first Jarhead. Jarhead 2 sucked. I think there's a second one. I watched it, it sucked. Oh, Hurt Locker. That's a good movie. What the fuck is that? Uh, it's um. The, is it a locker? No, it's, about it's a Jones guy. Or? It's a guy that his sole purpose in the war is to deactivate Milan mines, and oh. they live. They're so the movie's so baller. Like it's so like what do you say it? Um, it's like uh over like uh dr- dramatized or over yeah. romanticized the job of someone that cuts like the landmine, and they're like, oh yeah, I just saw the day of going to work. It's uh, what's his name? Who's the arrow guy in Avengers? Hawkeye. Uh, Hawkeye, like the, the, the actor. Uh, Anyways, uh, um, Henry's, it's, it's yeah. him. It's him. Henry okay. Cavill. Uh, no, it's, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's over dramatized. It's over romanticized because like, oh yeah, I, I, this could be my last day, but I don't give a fuck. You know, I'll let me cut these minds. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> and it's 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 a nice movie. That's a nice movie. Okay. As well. okay, okay. So my rating, like I said before, it's. About the blow. Blow. Thank you guys for watching. It was really fun. It was really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh. It was a very good movie. Uh, next week, our show is Drumroll. The Shawshank Redemption. Uh, Let's go. Mm. Yeah, baby. Come on, come on, come on. I got to do it. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> that was the perfect place to be. <laughs> uh, if you haven't seen Shawshank Redemption, I would suggest you guys watch it. It's, uh, I think it's the highest rated movie on IMDb. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, nice. uh, it's a prison movie and it's really, really good. Like and subscribe, right? Like, subscribe. If you enjoyed, Ballsy. if you enjoyed the movie, or if you not, no, well, if you enjoyed the movie, fuck it. If you enjoyed the movie, like and subscribe. <laughs> if you enjoyed the show, like and subscribe as well. Ballsy. Follow us on Instagram. Follow uh, me on TikTok as well. Like uh, I have a TikTok page for all the stuffs. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. And remember, yeah, baby. Peace out, baby. <laughs>